Well, that's Mr. Muller for lesson 10-6, theoretical probability. All right, so in this lesson, we're going to have to determine the theoretical and experimental probability and convert between probability and odds, which could be a little tricky because of how probability and odds are normally written. Okay, so then kind of the same components from last time, saying whether something's equally likely or fair, things like that. Um, so again, we kind of talked about this with graphs a little bit. Um, here's a pie graph here um, showing is it equally likely to land on blue, yes or no. Well, the answer is no. Blue on the right one takes up about half versus blue on the left one takes up a quarter. Even though there's still four colors, you need to make sure that all of your outcomes are equally as likely. There's, otherwise, it's not really a fair uh, competition there. So remember, theoretical probability is what should happen in theory. Okay, if I flip a coin twice, I should get one heads, one tails, but that's not always what happens. Okay, and again, make sure it's a fair um, experiment. You can't have like a two-headed coin and say, oh, I bet you I'm going to get tails because, well, that's never going to happen. Okay, so theoretically, if I have a dice, my probability of rolling a five is going to be one out of six. Theoretically, if... I have a dice, and I, what's my probability of rolling an odd number? Well, I have one, I have um, three, I have five out of six. Three out of six is one half. Probability of rolling something less than or equal to a four. I have one, two, three, four out of six is two thirds. And probability of rolling a prime number. Remember, one is not a prime number, so I have two, three, five. So again, I'm at a half, three out of six. So that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm always going to get a five if I roll the dice six times, or it doesn't mean I'm going to get a not number if I roll the dice twice. I could get two even numbers. Things like that can happen, but this is, in theory, what should happen. Okay, so kind of like this right here. So this person uh, tossed a coin in the air. So in theory, they should have gotten, you know, they did it ten times, so they should have gotten five heads, five tails. So that's what should have happened in theory. But this time it was three heads and seven tails. One thing you always have to make sure of in any experiment, whether it's theoretical or experimental, is that all of your experiments are accounted for. So they should always add up to one. So in this case, one half and one half is two over two, which is one, or three tenths and seven tenths is 10 over 10, which is still one. Make sure there's no, it's a simple way to check if there's an easy mistake at the end of the um, theory. Okay, and then remember, sometimes you're, it's going to ask you what the probability of an event not happening is. So if you know what the probability of an event happening is, well, then you know the probability of the event not happening. And then again, those should always equal 1. Okay, if there's a 70% chance of snow, that means there's a 30% chance it's not going to snow. Okay, so... Again, they usually don't say that on the news, like, oh, there's 70% chance of rain, which means there's really a 30% chance of it not raining. No, that's why we don't usually talk about um, chances of rain and things like that unless it's over 50% because it's really not likely to happen then because there's less than a 50% chance it'll happen. So then we don't usually talk about it. Um, something like this. If I have the probability of choosing a green marble is 0.2, probability of choosing a blue marble is 0.3, probability of choosing a pur purple marble is 0.1, what's the probability of choosing a white marble? Again, all of these I know need to add up to 1. So 0.2 plus 0.3 plus 0.1 is going to be 0.6. So that means there is a 0.4 chance of choosing a white marble. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is the um, odds. Okay, so when we're doing something like this, remember the odds in favor of winning a contest are 1 in 9. That means for every one time I win, I'm going to lose 9 times. So that means my probability of winning is 1 out of 10. I have to add up those two numbers in order to get my probability. Okay, the odds against a spinner landing on red are two out of three. 
Okay, so that means for every time, it's going to happen two times and not happen three times. So that means I know my denominator is going to be five times. Okay, what is the probability of the spinner is landing on red? So that means it's going to be three out of five. Okay, so I'm going to take that three then since it's at odds against. So it's going to be three out of five. This one goes the other way. The probability of winning a tournament is one out of 16. What are the odds? Okay, just like here, we added up to get here. So that means the numbers I'm going to add up are going to add to 16. So I'm going to win one time and lose 15 times. Okay, so 1 to 15 is going to be my odds. So it tells me the probability is 1 out of 16. So kind of confusing with the odds and the probability. Remember with this colon, that means I'm going to win one time, lose 15 times. So my probability is 1 out of 16.